Welcome to A Day of Prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Welcome back to Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study Podcast. We're glad you could join us and be a part of our family. Before we get into the word, La Charles, can you please pray for us? Yes. Lord, I just thank you for today, and Lord, I just thank you for everything that you've been doing in our ministry, Lord, and just blessing it, Lord, and just thank you for blessing everybody, Lord, and just making it peaceful for us, Lord. Lord, I also just thank you for your Holy Spirit and that he is in these meetings with us, Lord, so that way we can all learn and be better than you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, so we are continuing our study in 1 Corinthians. Um, so we're in chapter 3. If I could get a volunteer to read from verses 8 through 17, please. I will. All right, I promise. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one receives his own reward according to his own labor. We are God, for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, hay, not sorry, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by flock. Fire, and the fire will test each one's work, of which sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it on it du- endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, for he for he himself will be saved, yet as yet so as through fire. Do not know what you do. You not know what you are in the temple. Do you not? Know that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. All right, so I'm going to open the floor to you guys first, as we normally do. So you can share with the Holy Spirit speaking and ministering to you, and to ask any questions that you have. All right? Okay, so who would like to begin? Okay. Go for it. Um, verses 12 through um, 15 really caught my attention when Paul was talking about building on the foundation that Christ has laid um and he and paul that is says there were different kinds of materials that you could build with there was um, gold silver precious stones wood hay and straw um and then he said each one's work we each have a role to build we all have a role to play in god's grand scheme of salvation so your works, you want them to be good. And I'm not saying that you'd be saved by your works, but when you want, when God comes to examine you, you want him to find only good things about you, not, oh, you fell short here, you messed up there, you decided to sin way back there, and now we got to fix these things, which would be like equivalent to building a house out of hay, like the three little pigs a little bit. Uh-huh. One had hay, one had sticks, and the other had bricks. Two houses blew away because they weren't built on the proper foundation. They weren't made of sturdy material. Our works for God should be made of that sturdy material so Satan can't come and blow it away. And we're left with nothing but the bare basics of what Jesus had already done and now built from ground zero all the way back up. It shouldn't be like that. And that's part of the maturity piece of maturing in Christ and growing in him. We learn those principles and those things so now we can do the greater missions he's got for us and do that in excellence and not 
inchworm in the glass type of deal. Thank you, sweetheart. You're welcome. Anyone else? I'd like to go. Well, please do, sir. The Lord was showing me verse, um, verse 10 and all this kind of, sorry, verse 10 all the way to 14. Okay. Where it says, according to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another built on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or sh- hay straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day of judgment will declare it, because it will be reviewed by fire. And fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. The Lord is showing me that with the... It's not just building your house out of weak material, but it's also matching up the foundation. It's like a three-year-old trying to match a circle inside of a square hole. It has to go inside the right hole so it can actually fit. It's the same here. The foundation that which Paul said he laid, not that he, Paul actually came and laid it, but you what you do is supposed to match your confession. Mm. And mm-hmm. I believe Mr. Brother Hagen referenced this inside of his book. And he said that what, come, what comes out, what will come out of your heart is what's out of your heart. And okay, go ahead. Also, when Paul... Yes, Paul was talking about testing with fire. He's not talking about what you... It's also talking about what you do in this realm, but also what happens when it comes to hard knocks. Do you shrivel up, or do you go bigger and go, I'm, I don't want to lose my salvation. I'm going to keep it and go grow harder inside the Lord and grow deeper. Mm-hmm. That's it for now. Oh, okay. <laughs> What were you going to say, sir? No, you can go. No, please, go. I also found it interesting where Paul was talking about being a master builder and how he laid the foundation. The Lord was showing me that, like Promise said, it wasn't Paul actually laying the foundation, but it was the revelation of knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it just reminds me of, in the first couple um, verses of chapter 3, how he's talking about how they're still in the milk of the word. He's relating that the foundation of it, just barely knowing Jesus Christ is a foundation, but you should continue to build bigger. Like if you're building a house, you don't just want the walls and have no roof. You have to continue to build until you have a complete house. I think that's also what Paul's getting at here and how he's saying that he's leading them in the right way, but he's not going to be there the whole way to carry them to the finish line. They're going to eventually have to step up and do it themselves and continue building. Mm-hmm. Okay, amen. What else? That was it for now. Okay. Go ahead, Tony. Well, I, I think it's important, you know, as a builder, I <laughs> I do build, and I am deeply rooted in the construction industry. Um, there was a, a house I was called to look at. The floor was sagging. This was probably 15 years ago, and the house was maybe 15 years old then. And um, somehow or another, I have no way... I cannot imagine how it happened, but the house was built without a foundation. There was railroad ties laid down, and the house was built on top of the railroad ties. And so when I got to the house and saw the floor was sagging, I said, well, is this on a, this must be built on a slab. And he goes, no, no, it's not a slab. There's wood underneath it. And I said, well, that, that can't be right. It's not tall enough. I'm kind of confused. And so we ultimately ended up uh, cutting a section of the floor out to see what was underneath and that's where we found the railroad ties, and that's how the house had been built. And so um, the owner of the house, the person who bought it, made the assumption that it was built on a foundation, only to find out later that it wasn't. Wow. And so what I think everyone should at least consider is 
first and foremost, do you have a foundation? Mm-hmm. There are many that have been in a church or a building that calls itself a church because the building isn't really the church, but um, and they have accepted what they have received um, from those in leadership in the church, whether from the pulpit or in a Sunday school class or those that they just assumed had a leadership position, but they may not have had any foundation whatsoever, or they may have had an incorrect foundation. And so for this particular customer, I said, there's absolutely nothing I can do for you. And he said, what do you mean? I said, I couldn't even lift the house to put a foundation underneath it. It's, it's impossible at this point. There's literally the only thing that could be done is the house to be torn down and start all over again. So, um, you know, just consider for yourselves, is your foundation right? Is it truly properly built on the word of God through Christ, knowing that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word is God and understanding that and being able to come to a place in your heart where you can fully and truly receive God's revealed word, what we call the Bible as completely true and completely without errors. If you don't, if you're not there, there's no sense in building anything else. And if you've built something, as costly as it may be, uh, it's still going to be le- uh, as costly as it may be to tear it down and start over. It will still be less costly than to continue to proceed because what you have will be burned up. And um, just a challenge for everybody to kind of think about what is your foundation? Is it solid? Is it built clearly? And can you truly, absolutely, positively say with certainty that the Bible, God's inspired word from the Holy Spirit is infallible. It's completely accurate, just the way it's written, and that you can receive it fully. And if not, I just you know, would tell you to get on your knees and you know, cry out to God to get to that place where you can do that. Anything else is foolishness. Amen to that. Absolutely. Amen. I love how, um, and thank you for that, brother. I was, being a builder, it's, uh, <laughs> it's important to get a builder's perspective, which, uh, you know, that's, that's great. So praise the Lord. Yeah, there's, there's a whole lot more to that, but I Absolutely. just, yeah, we, it's no purpose in getting into that. Layman's <laughs> terms, and yeah, yeah, let's keep it simple, and <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. But um, I love this because it's not the, the only time that Paul brings this up about the foundation and laying a foundation. Um, in Ephesians 2, um, 20 is is really the verse, but I'll, I'll say 19 through 22, and I'll read that, and then we'll explain something. It says, Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple of the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. And I think it's, so again, we see that that repetitive nature of Paul. Like I, I said it to this group, but I'm going to say it to you again, because, and, and we see in Scripture, it's a safeguard for us. Even as as children, right, our parents talk to us or taught us and then just give the lesson one time. It was repetitive until we got it, until it was demonstrated that we got it, right? So, it, but it's also how we understand, right? The scripture tells us to be careful how we hear. And and I, I want to bring this up because many times, especially verse 20, can be misunderstood or misinterpreted and saying it's been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. But if you really look at that verse and what it's saying, it is the apostles and prophets' foundation is Christ himself. Not that they laid the foundation. The foundation was already laid, and the foundation being Christ Jesus, and that they built on that foundation, him being their rock and also their cornerstone. And, well, Dean, I'm sure you can add more clarity to this about cornerstones, especially um, the, the significance and importance and how, you know, and please correct me if I... If I misspeak here, but the entirety of the wall, the structure, everything was lined to that cornerstone. So there were no, um, I'll say waves in your walls. There are no um, bulges or sags or lags or anything. The easiest way to say it would be that that is the 
prime reference point for everything else in the house. And okay. If it's not right, everything else in the house will be wrong. And it gets exaggerated the further you get away from the cornerstone. So when you, by the time you got to the roof, the house is going to look like it's falling over. You know, you may not notice it on the first couple of bricks you lay, but as you continue, you'll it becomes more and more obvious how messed up it is if the cornerstone is not right. And Christ certainly is the cornerstone we can trust to be right and true. Absolutely. And uh, which, thank you, because that brings me to uh, the next point here, is the apostles and prophets didn't create their own foundation, their own cornerstone. They didn't do their own things. They did as they were led by the Lord to do. Right? Not of not of their own, not... and, and and there's a lot, and we'll get into seeking rewards as well. But we got to first start with the foundation, which is Christ. <laughs> as, as you pointed out, brother, that's the key to every building. You got to have a foundation. If you don't have a foundation, there's nothing we can do for it. It's got to be torn down and restarted. But then also, um, what Paul is saying does come from the Old Testament. It comes from Isaiah, um, Isaiah 28, and uh, verses. Uh, we'll start in verse 16. There's a couple things here that I think we need to point out. Everybody there? Yes. All right. Isaiah 28, verse 16. And it says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. Also, I will make justice the measuring line, and righteousness the plummet. Now, I think we'll just we'll stop there for now, right? So, and and, and again, brother, you being in construction, I'm sure it can give us more clarity and, and uh, help with our understanding of what a plumb line or plummet line is and the, its significance in in building. Um, so, if you would please. Well, again, keeping it simple, so um, the the plumb line carries out the the uh, angles of the cornerstone, so they can be transferred throughout the rest of the building. So it's what keeps us true to the cornerstone as we continue to climb. At least, uh, it's continue to build. At least for this example, that should get it exactly. So, but so as we look at Isaiah, right, and he's saying this is who Christ is. Right, he is the, the foundation, he is the cornerstone, he is all those things. And then there is a plumb line so that we can remain true in the building, right? Which is exactly what Paul is saying here. Like, hey, be careful how you build on it. Or because it must remain true to the cornerstone, to what's already been laid and what's already been set, so that there are no issues. But when we try to build on our own or do things our own way, outside of the will of the Lord and how he's leading us through his Holy Spirit, issues arise. And you see this throughout the entirety of Scripture, but um, if we just look at Amos 17 for a second, uh, and, and I say this because the plumb line shows up repeatedly throughout Scripture. Right? I think it's significant, and I'll let you guys, everyone that's listening, study it out for yourselves. But in Amos... Uh, chapter 7. Actually, we can start in verse 7. <clears throat> and it says, Then he showed me. Behold, the Lord stood on a wall made with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, A plumb line. Then the Lord said, Behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not pass by them any more. And, and we'll stop there, but what follows is, is destruction. Exactly like what you were saying, Dean, about the house. Like, there was no foundation. It was not set to anything. There was no cornerstone, which is what Paul is saying. Hey, be careful how you build. So, if we don't build on, on a foundation, the foundation, the rock, that is Christ as our cornerstone, all the works, all the whatever it is, must be torn down. There, there's Nothing, there's no hope for it except for destruction. And so I bring that up to say this, and I've said it before, but I think clearly it bears repeating. We must be in line, aligned to Christ as our foundation, as our cornerstone. And not just us, but if we are 
if we are aligned to him, doing his will, then we will be building sure as a wise master builder on the foundation already set for both our lives, but then also helping those and the lives around us or our neighbor. Let me, let me add some clarity to that if I can, as in regards to the plumb line. So we make reference, you just said it, is it in line with? Exactly. That's where it comes from. So it comes from a plumb line. So something that it's a guide to make sure we're true. Uh And so in building, we don't set a cornerstone and then pop a plumb, plumb line when we're done to see if it lined up. We're constantly reusing the plumb line to continue to make sure that as we build, we're in line with the cornerstone, uh-huh. with the reference point, that it's square, that it's level, and for our sake, that it's true, that it's right. And so exactly. the plumb line is not something that's used one time. It's a constant um, use because it's so easy to get off point. And one, you know, just one fraction of an inch or one decimal of an inch, one, one minute little piece as you continue to build, the farther you get away from that, the more obvious and the more messed up it becomes. And so uh, what we're doing here uh, in a corporate uh, Bible study that we come together, that we can search these things out, that we can reason these things out so that we can verify our thoughts are true. Although we have the revelation of the Holy Spirit and we have revelation from, um, or we have guidance from those in leadership within the ecclesia, the church, um, we also still need to rely on our own brothers and sisters and our families to make sure that we are plumb and true at all times. We're not supposed to leave it just to ourselves. God designed it to be that way. So that's the accurate measure and the accurate use of that plumb line for our own individual spiritual growth. Uh-huh. Go ahead, sir. Can me promise? Yes, you promise, sir. Okay. <laughs> Lord wanted me to cover verse 16 down to verse 17. Okay. Wait. Verse 15 to 17. If anyone, if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. This also, Lord, show me. This also build, builds upon what we're talking about, the foundation. You, Since Paul saying that you're the temple of God, when you're actually listening to the Lord, you only build with what the Lord has. There's no mistakes made. Like building with straw on a rock foundation. Uh-huh. So, it's not just... He doesn't just mean that we can praise Him uh, at all times. But He also means that since we're the temple of God, we're the material that's building up the walls. So we're living material that God is building with? Yes. Okay. Does that sound familiar? Like what Peter says? Yes. Living stones. Okay. What does it say? I have to find it, though. Okay. We'll give you a minute. Oh, actually, while you're looking that up, right, and this, I'll say, continues your point there, promise, right? In Zechariah 4, starting at verses 8 through 10, it says how the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to him, that is Zechariah, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who is despised the day of small things? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord, which scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. So, promise, your point was that if we are in line with the, with the Lord, through His Holy Spirit, it's not us that's actually building the temple. It, it's us coming into alignment. He's actually building the temple and shaping and moving us, conforming us to His image, which can only happen through the Holy Spirit. Those are the, the seven that rejoice to see the plumb line, right? Yes. You can find that in Isaiah 11, 
verses 1 through 3, especially verse 2, but then also in Revelation, how it talks about uh, the seven lampstands. Some interpret that as the church, but th- uh, it's also about the Holy Spirit, right? Yes. So that, that stand before the Lord, right? The spirit of wisdom and counsel and knowledge and might and strength and understanding and the spirit of the Lord, right? So that, that's what it is. Again, you find that in Isaiah 11 too. But it's, there's also scripture that says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. Unless, right? Does everybody remember that? Yes. yes. Familiar with that verse? Okay. So, I can only do or build as the Lord gives me, instructs me to build. Which is why one of the reasons why Jesus constantly, I think it's at least seven times in Scripture, says, I only say what the Father says, I only do what the Father does. Nothing of my own initiative. Why? Because as a wise master builder, and him being that foundation, and the, and the chief cornerstone that we all need to be set to, or so our pattern and example He's giving us the pattern right there. This is how you do it. I can't do this of my own initiative. No matter what I build with, right? You see all these materials. Straw. Who decides to build a house with straw? And I understand historically straw was used to make bricks. Even then, right? And then there's gold and silver and all these other precious things. It doesn't matter how precious it appears unless the Lord built it. It's in vain. Does that make more sense? Yes. Yes. Do you find it, Layla? Oh, the scripture I was looking for? Yes. Uh, I think so. Um, First Peter 2, and just read 4 and 5. You can read it later on your own. Um, Coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up... A, um, a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Anyone else have anything they want to share? The Holy uh, Spirit's I'm still share? going. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead, <laughs> sir. I apologize. It's okay. And most people... When you just look at, most people think 15 and 15 through 16, 17 don't really match up. But when we're talking about that, you built, not built, if you actually listen to the Lord and do what he says, you end up being the material that the Lord, the material that the Lord is. Not that you're all powerful and stuff like that, but you're... You're in alignment with the Lord. So when fire, when you come to get tested with fire, you're not found wanting. So when you listen to the Lord fully and go, okay, Lord, this is what I'm going to do. You're going to be a person that doesn't lose. Uh-huh. And that's it. We are more than conquerors, right? Through him that loved us. Jesus helps us to overcome. And... Interestingly enough, we are called the body of Christ, right? Yes. And as you were saying, promise, the more we allow him to manifest and um, have authority to control what it is that we do and say and value and take part of, the more we become like him. Just as he let the father dictate what he did, right? Right which has allowed him to have control, that's lordship, and authority. The Bible says that he learned obedience through his suffering so that he, he put in practice the very same things that we are to put in practice towards him. He demonstrated them in his relationship with the Father. So the more we allow him to retrain us, to direct us, to guide us, to exercise his lordship, the more we look like him. And we are his body. So shouldn't our hands match our face yes shouldn't our arms look like and our legs look like they belong to the same body not a little frankenstein you know patchwork kind of deal but look like we belong to the very same body yes so we are his workmanship and it's not a light thing to let him be god in our lives it's not a light thing to let him be lord 
and to um, Hebrews talks about us entering into God's rest. It's not a light thing for us to allow ourselves to change our value and perspective to line it up with what God says is valuable and make that what we pursue versus what's quick or what's easy. You know, the, the wood and the hay and the straw, it's quick, it's convenient, it's easy, it's trendy. It's all of those things that quickly vanish away and you of the materials listed. Some of them would burn up quickly. They're actually kindling. <laughs> They're used to start fires versus being able to resist. And some of them took longer, like the gold and the precious stone would be more resistant to fire. Yes, baby. Go ahead. It's oh, a... I just thought gold had a more, I thought it melt easy. It does, but it's, it doesn't, it it's turns liquidy. Than... It turns to liquid more so than it turns to ash. So it will change its state with the depending on the heat source and how much heat or the temperature it needs to change its state. But it's more resistant to heat than something that is used to start fire. Take that out, though. Stay with the gold because um, promise hit some wisdom. There's, some, there's a lot of wisdom in what God was showing you there. And, and as we're talking about the body, so... Um, Let's just, let's just picture a building in your mind that's built of bricks. And you're one of those bricks in that building. And you decided that your brick would be made of gold. It won't stand up to the weight of the other bricks on top of it as it continues to get built. And so you'll actually cause all the other bricks to falter in that. Exactly. And so uh, we, we cannot take lightly the impact and, and, uh, of our decisions on others and the accountability we have to the rest of the body in the way that we constantly use that plumb line that, John was bringing up that we continue, we have to focus back. And we, it's, it's at least a daily, if not literally minute by minute, refocusing our thoughts back. Uh-huh. Is this lined up with that? Which is what you were saying, John, and says, you know, am I doing what the Father says do? And am I, you know, and, and am, I, am I saying what he says say, right? And exactly. I take that back to, you know, Christ's words, and uh, you can probably help me find where it is more so, but it's just, you know, Woe to you who would cause one of these little ones to stumble. It would be better that a millstone was tied around his neck and uh-huh. he was cast into the ocean. There's a high level of accountability to us as we claim to be a brick and what we've made ourselves out of. And, and the rest of the building is counting on us to be a solid material that is plumb lined back true and right to Christ. Exactly. And then with that, there's also the, the exhortation, the, um, the encouragement in the word that we judge ourselves all right or examine ourselves rightly are we in line is, like let's set the plumb line to ourselves am i in every aspect of my life in alignment with what the lord is saying because right, if we judged ourselves rightly we would have no need or reason for anyone else to judge us all right that's that's what scripture says so are we doing that in our own lives and even like we'd already read right? What is the plumb line? It's made up of justice and righteousness. The right, uh, we are the righteousness in Christ Jesus. The key there is in Christ Jesus, not of our own righteousness. It's nothing but filthy rags. Uh, well, and filthy rags, or you can study that out and get the, the full translation, right? It, it, it's pretty horrific. <laughs> it's, it's gross, right? Okay. Like, Essentially, it's refuse. It's waste. It is awful. That's that's our own righteousness. That's how. That's the Lord's perception of our own righteousness. So the key there is the righteousness in Christ Jesus, which brings us right back to this: the plumb line and the building and judging ourselves and making sure we, and by we I mean us in total, every aspect of our lives is brought into into submission to the Lord Jesus Christ. That we are exhibiting his nature, his character, his attributes. We're being conformed to his image. We are his body. Right? Isn't that what he said? In the beginning, right? In Genesis, let us make man in our image. Not our own image. Not what we think we should look like. What the Lord determines that we should look like, has determined that we should look like which ultimately is himself. And 
Hey, I had something else I want to add. Well, please do, sir. Also, like how Dad talked about Genesis, where God said, Genesis, I have a bookmark, Genesis 126, where it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion, dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Which is also why that the Lord showed me that when we listen to the Lord, we end up being the same kind of material that the Lord is. Uh-huh. Because He created us inside of His image. Not That's also why animals can't do the same thing that humans can. Amen. Amen, sir. Uh-huh. What were you going to say, Ella Charles? Um... I also found it interesting. The Lord was showing me that inside of what we we're reading, there was actually three people. What we read here, all the people are actually working and actively building. Even if they are building with wrong materials such as straw, the Lord was showing me that while you are all, not building just the same as building with the wrong material. If you are just sitting there stagnant with a foundation, you can't expect to how to appear there, you have to go actively put in work. Or you can't just use weak material that's light to carry and easy to use and go make a house. The same is true. You have to constantly strive and make efforts if you're just waiting there for the Lord to download it straight to your brain without you having to do anything. You're going to just sit there with that foundation for the rest of your life. It does no good. Like if I'm building and I'm asked to build a house, if I'm just sitting there saying, Lord, drop the house here. And there's no effort on my part. Nothing will happen. I have to go out, get the materials, and start building. But that only comes when I'm listening to Christ. Well, That's it. Well, yes. It comes from a willingness <coughs> to be obedient to what he has instructed you to do. The, the plans, the purpose, the calling that he has for you. And, and not just you. I mean, everyone is listening. You, the royal you. Everyone. For each of us, for me, for you, for everyone. And the plan and purpose he has for you is is not the same as he has for me or anyone else. That's why we're told we have to run our own race, work out our own soul salvation. Are there going to be some similarities at the core? Are there going to be some, yes. some things that are, I'll say, common? Absolutely. However, your, I'll say, job, role, responsibility that he's given you is not exactly, not going to look exactly like mine. We're not carbon copies of each other. Right? He's made us all unique. Right? Just like we consider snowflakes. Right? No two look alike. Okay, well, he's made us, I'll say, similarly in that no two of us are alike. But yet, we all look the same in Christ when we are conformed to his image. When we, when we are conformed to his image, we all look like Jesus. And that is the goal, right? Yes. Okay. So I just want to encourage everyone to press on towards that goal. If there are things, areas in your life that don't reflect Christ, his nature, his character, his attributes, bring them before the Lord. Don't, don't be beat down by them. Just bring them before him. Confess them to the Lord, and and leave them there, like which is, and leave them at His feet, and then purpose to not do them again. If you've left them there, He has it, so it's not part of you anymore. Mm-hmm. And I say that as in, just you know, we there are tons of scriptures say, and one a common one is if my people right will humble themselves, seek my face, pray, and turn. Right? So turn. Stop doing those actions. Isn't that what Christ said throughout his ministry constantly? Yes. Okay, you've been healed. Now go and sin no more. Don't do those same actions again. And we don't have to in Christ. If, we're, if we are, I'll say, latched on to him, if he is our everything, our entire being is found in him, then there's no room. So bring it before the Lord. All right? Okay. 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 
Well, so let's pause there for today, and uh, we'll pick it up again next time. All right? Can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, I just thank you for today and for another opportunity to come together with family and friends, Lord, to discuss your word, Lord, to learn about you and to grow and mature, Lord, to be those people that you called us to be, Lord, that you laid out the destiny track for us, that we can fulfill all that you've asked of us, Lord. And I just thank you for the blessings you have been pulling out on your people, Lord, and drawing in those that belong to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.